All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Peter Del Tondo. I am your host this week, next, and actually the week after here for the Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. So today we're gonna to be jumping into our first challenge. So excited that you guys are here, excited to learn. We're gonna have a really fun challenge today. Uh, jump into a uh, fitness application. Uh, again, that's gonna be the challenge that I'm doing. I encourage you guys to mold and shape this challenge and kind of the things that you learn around something that you guys are uniquely interested in. So make sure to use your, uh, your passions and hobbies and pull that out. And we've got a ton of folks here in chat. I see Cindy, Andrew Hockrattle, good to see you buddy. Uh, might even have some Easter eggs for you here today. Uh, Alberto, Kingsley, we've got a ton of folks. So thank you all so much for joining in and uh, hopping in here with us today. If you are new to the community, make sure you join the Discord server right up here. Uh, and what you'll notice uh, as you join this server, there's an amazing community of people fantastic folks to uh, get insight in, uh, or insight from, uh, get feedback and critique on work. You'll see Julie, Melody, myself, Tim, Andrea, Chris Cannon, Howard Pinsky. We'll be here all throughout the week reviewing the challenges that you guys submit. Uh, and you can do so by coming over here to the feedback area and clicking on current challenge. And from here, you'll share your Behance uh, project URL or the Adobe uh, XD file URL. And I'll show you how to do both of those later in the challenge. Um, and make sure you guys don't worry about if you're finished, if you're in progress, make sure to show your work, show early, share often, and get that feedback and critique. And we'll all be in there really excited to give you all some tips and tricks. So make sure you join the Discord, make sure you are part of this community. Give back. The more you put in helping others, the more that they'll help you as well. Um, so that's where you go there and I encourage you to go explore the other channels and learn a ton of stuff too. So as we come over here, uh, if you go to behance.net slash challenge slash XD, uh, come on over and each day we'll be unlocking these challenges as we go. And today we're going to learn a little bit about design systems and you know how to set up the foundation of this. I've got about 20 minutes to teach you this. I can't fully do it in 20 minutes, but luckily we have another stream right after this that's gonna be going into a deeper dive in design systems. So I really encourage you to stick around for that one as well and learn a lot more that I just can't fit into this time period. Uh, so without further ado, make sure you click get started and that'll let you download the file that we've got here. And uh, let's jump in. I've, don't look at the final version of this on the side. Um, let's, let's focus on this and what you guys are gonna see. So as we jump in here, our prompt today is to create a mobile app to learn more about a group of people or a team of one of your interests. Um, so for me, I'm picking uh, some fitness. Uh, I'm going to do the, the Peloton bike. Um, I have a lot of fun on that. I have an old injury uh, with my legs and I can't really be that active anymore, but I've luckily been able to stay active thanks to cycling. So uh, with that, I'm going to kind of jump into that and I'm going to help you find like the right instructor for you and get to know people a little bit more. Um, and so the principles today, we're gonna utilize best practices with naming and organizing our assets and see how we can create uh, reusable assets and components that we can easily swap out along the way. And we'll talk through how some of these things are really, really helpful. Oh yeah, thank you, Tim, I apologize. I forgot to switch over to the stream. So what we were just reviewing here, oh, and let me, Lower the music. Sorry about that, guys. All right. Hopefully, we're caught up here. Um, so, reviewing this screen here as we talk about what the prompt is for today, you guys can check that out. I'll lower the music just a hair more to, to be careful. Um, thank you for that. So excited. I just jumped in, forgot to hit tabs on the side. Uh, all right. So, we're back in action. Um, as I mentioned, explore something that's of interest to you. If you guys are interested in a different sport, um, a, a professional team, uh, something with games or movies or actors, you can apply all of these uh, things to what you want to build. So I encourage you to tailor these challenges to you all throughout this week and next. Um, but you can follow along with me if you like or if we share the same kind of hobbies. Uh, so coming down here, I'm going to go down to some of my inspiration stuff and I'm, I'm really drawn into these like clean uh, UIs. Uh, I definitely like the light UI, um, some really nice subtle kind of gray tones, 
I really love how the photography is the, the call to action and pulling this out there. Uh, and as we come down, you know, some interesting use of color to call attention to things. We do have to be really careful with the Peloton app because red is a primary brand color and red is also very associated with things like warnings and, uh, and issues. So we want to be careful how we use it so it doesn't look like something is wrong. Um, but instead that, you know, this is the, the branded path that we want the user to go down. Um, and so I've also pulled a couple of things from Peloton directly. And one thing I noticed, as much as I love the UI of the app, um, not just as a user, but as a designer, it's kind of wildly inconsistent. There's a whole lot of different grays that are being used. Um, you'll notice in here, we've got one shade of gray, which is different than the mobile app, which is different than the tablet app. And I couldn't make sense of it as I was doing my research and trying to figure out when and where, because I wanted to try to adhere to a lot of the brand standards and colors, uh, and it just wasn't really doing it. So we're going to simplify a couple of things and we're going to keep things a little bit cleaner. Um, but I come over, there's a lot of cool stuff that is happening in terms of when I go to classes, I can get details about it. Uh, I can see, you know, really great photography all throughout. That's something that they do really have. Um, and then they utilize a lot of drag swipes to see the additional content. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and uh, I'm just going to move you out so you guys don't see that. We'll kind of quickly delete a bunch of stuff. So we have a, a nice clean palette. Uh, and one thing that I noticed was that coming in again, I've got this really kind of dark and muddy gray um, for this background. And to me, it just feels inconsistent. It's a little bit distracting. I feel like it's taking away a bit from the, uh, the content that is on the page. And so what we want to do is maybe simplify that a little bit um, and, uh, you know, want to clean it up so that way other things pop off a little bit more. It's not as distracting. I don't know why it's all this white space. We've got the instructor over here on the side, but I keep kind of going into the abyss of, you know, kind of a bland and boring color. Um, so it was just kind of an interesting observation that I had and uh, wanted to take a look at. So I've set up a couple of things. Let me grab some of my instructors up here. I'm going to use them first. And really quickly, just for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to keep things kind of simple. I want to stay within the realm of what they've got going here in the Peloton app. Um, but we can quickly create some nice, easy shapes. And I'm gonna come in, we can even, uh, a little trick I like to do is I'll just make like a box like this so it's really easy to see. And I might just come over here and I'm gonna loosely grab the size and the shape here. I wanna give this a little bit of a rounded corner just to soften that up a little bit. And now I wanna start assigning some colors to this. And, and I've picked a color over here that I like, um, but let's delete this so we can start over. So I've got this gray color, and I think this is gonna work really well for all of my backgrounds and cards, because I kinda of wanna reverse it. I want the cards to be slightly gray rather than the background. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on this color, and that's gonna set it as uh, one of my colors in my design system. And what's really neat about this now is as I duplicate this, I can come in and edit this, and I can change the color to anything I want. And the reason that this stuff is really important to establish and set up along the way is that as you work, if you make uh, changes in your decisions throughout your design process, it could be so tedious to change tens or hundreds of screens and modify all of these colors. So if you do it in one place, that system is now going to update everywhere and this is going to save you minutes and hours in uh, your design process. So it's really, really, really important. Uh, so highly recommend that you guys do that. And we'll just go back there. Um, I've also set up some other colors here, such as my uh, Peloton Red. Um, I like using 333. It's, it's a good off black color. You never want to use straight black. It's very hard on the eyes. Um, but we can come in now and I'm just going to duplicate this. And uh, actually, I meant to pull these in as separate files. Let me find, there we go. All right, so I, I duplicated my layer, that way I could pull him in as a mask. And I wanna bring that up now. I'm gonna create my area over here. And I can now pull and move him around as I want. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up, and Alex here is one of my favorite 
instructors. He's got an awesome kind of drill instructor type uh, vibe. Oops. Come here. We're going to set that to that dark text. We're using Roboto. That's what I noticed that their, uh, their typeface was. And let's bring this down to like 16 or something. And then from here, I'm going to, I'm going to cheat and go to what I grabbed already. And we'll pull this in, make this regular. Let's drop this down a little bit. And so what I did was I just grabbed some text from their website. So this is all real content. I mentioned that a little bit yesterday, really encourage you guys to use the real content for your uh, designs. It looks way better than when you kind of fake it and just put in, you know, random warm ipsum stuff. Uh, the designs don't look and feel real uh, and that makes a big difference. So the more realistic that you can make this feel, the better. Uh, and someone's asking, what exactly is a design system? A design system is the rules, the guidelines that you are going to follow throughout your project um, and your team uh, to make sure that you have consistency through everything. So that's why we establish things like our colors. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, uh, I don't know why this says missing fonts. Hmm. Let me just save. Oh, it might be SF Pro. Let me swap that. Can I just delete this? Hmm. Uh, anyways, what I would have liked to have done there, uh, or that's just missing fonts. That's an alert. We come over here to character styles, and now what I can do is it's going to show me Roboto 14, and I'm going to put in a description of this. So I'll do uh, trainer name. And then I can come over here, I'll do another type style, and I can say, oops. I don't know why that's graying me out. Technical problems. Sometimes that happens on a live stream. But what's really cool here is I can come in and now with the, uh, the name, I can come in here, I can say edit, and you know what, I want to bump all that up. And again, that's going to update that typeface in every situation that it's used. So really, really quickly, uh, you can keep design consistency throughout your entire application. And that's where it's really, really important to do that. Um, we can also do that with things like icons. So I could come in here and I'm going to pull in uh, an icon for, uh, let's just say, my hamburger. Uh, I'm going to come in and say components. And if I needed to or wanted to change that out, I could come in here, I could grab a different hamburger menu, and I could drop that in, excuse me, I have to line it up like just right, but what it'll allow me to do is swap those components, so if I were to edit and change that anywhere, that it's going to allow me to then keep that icon consistent throughout every application in which it's used. So those are really, really important things to do. Uh, so what we're going to do here really quickly is we're just going to start to uh, duplicate a couple of things and then I'll show you guys how I put all this together in a little bit and we'll come here we're gonna swap out uh, let's see where do I have the picture of Ali perfect I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna create a carousel of trainers to check out all right Expand this off for a second. And what app, app mockups are you referring to, Dominique? All this stuff, this is just a, uh, a screenshot of the app. And then the rest of this, uh, you can actually come in and create artboards um, by hitting A. And then over here, it'll give you all the different sizes that you could want to use and build that out. So real quick, I'm just going to have Ali Love. And I'll keep this text here for the moment. Uh, I'm going to group these items together. And now when I do that, that will keep them together. Let's go to 375. And now I can create a draggable element. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a moment. Um, but let's add a couple of more text. Uh, so let's come in here and we'll say, um, uh, find your trainer. And again, we can set those type styles. So here, I might want to bump that up a little bit. Uh, we'll go to 16. 
I'm gonna come over here. I don't understand why that's blocking me out again. Let's knock it down. I can come here. I've got that, and I can again edit this to say uh, section titles. And now, as I come down, I want to set up my next section. And I can say recommended programs. And now if I want to edit that, I'm going to come into edit and I can change the size and you guys see how this updates everywhere across the board. So really, really important that you guys take the time, uh, name and set up these character styles. Uh, I like to do stuff that's something like say 14 point and you see when I hover over here, it also shows my line spacing. I like to uh, see what that looks like here in the view. So I might put something like 14 over 21, which is the font size over the font line height. Uh, and that will allow me then to quickly glance at this, know what it is that I'm gonna be using and make sure that I then apply the right type um, to any one space. And that makes things really, really simple. Uh, another thing that I'm gonna do, and I'll show you guys how I use this in a little bit, um, again, just because of the time, I pre-build a lot of this stuff for you guys because I know as I explain it, it's a little tough to uh, cover in real time and design it. Um, but I'm going to come over here and I've got my ride info. And what this is, is I set up some text that, again, I can go in and use this to keep consistency throughout everything. So if I ever want to go back and change that maybe like right now, this is all caps, this last line is all caps, the font's a little bit smaller, this one's a little bit bigger, I can go in and I can modify the, uh, the settings for these and it'll modify everywhere that these are being used, which would otherwise take me a ton of time to go back and edit individually each time. So all these little tips and tricks, it's really good to, to take the time to set up these things so that you guys can then apply that going forward. So let's take a step back. I'm gonna show you guys the finished product over here and we can take a look and see how exactly this gets put together. So what I've done is I've created several cards here to meet the trainers. And one of the things that I wanted to do was set up a drag component so that way the user can swipe through side to side and get a glimpse at what um, uh, what other trainers are available and we can feature and highlight some. Uh, I also wanted to have the recommended programs, popular classes and things like that so we've got some other content here below. Uh, and Eddie's asking what are the icons I'm using at the bottom. Uh, as we mentioned on yesterday's stream, uh, I really like the uh, Nucleo icon uh, and Nucleo app. Uh, you can download it for Windows or Mac and it allows you to search for things so I can come in here real quick real quick and I can search for like arrow and it'll give me tons of arrows to choose from I can search left right up down etc and it makes things way way simpler um, but this is going to allow me my draggable element uh, I also want to be able to click into the profile so in this exercise again whether you guys do this type of, of exercise something that's fitness related or something that's like maybe a professional sports team uh, I don't know, I'm in close to LA, so we've got the Lakers here. If you wanted to go and put in um, your favorite player and do a profile for them and then maybe showcase some stats or whatnot, create a profile page and expand that out here. And you can see what I've done is I've added some pages for Alex and Ali. started exploring things like what if it was a dark background or a red background. Um, and then put in a little bio for them. Uh, come down here, I've got some other popular classes that you could tap into and take, uh, showcasing a quote from them, and then a final call to action. And so what you can do after you've built this all, um, like I said, we can, we can go through and modify all of this stuff. Since it's part of the, um, the system, I can go in and edit this master component. And if I wanted to change, say, this text to you know, a different color, I can type in there that is now going to change everywhere you see it I'm pointing at my screen like you guys can see that right here it's going to change that color everywhere um, and so we could use say that Peloton red color and it's going to apply across the board throughout the application so really quick really easy really simple to edit and you guys can see this is like a basic system I could put together in a few minutes as you build out really robust programs 
that's where you really want to live and work and make sure that you set this up. It's worth the time that it takes to build this to save you so much time in the future. Uh, a couple other quick things, and we're going to get more into detail all about prototyping and animation throughout. So I hope I'm not throwing too much at you guys today. Um, but we've got a couple of things here as we click into prototype mode. I want to set up a couple of things. So I want to have a fixed position when scrolling for these items here. Uh, I also want to set up my top section. Let me go out of prototype mode. And why is that holding something else? I'm going to click trainer profile, this guy and this guy. I'm going to group all that together. And I'm going to go back to prototype again. And I'm going to say fixed position because I want that to stay consistent. What that's going to do is lock that content in place as I scroll and move around the page. Um, so I can come in now and I'm going to set some drag components. So I click this item. I'm going to drag it over to the card that I want, set it to drag. Auto animates fine. Adobe Sensei is going to work some magic. And now what that's going to look like as I hit prototype is I can come here and I can drag. Oh, and I got to fix that. Something's duplicated, so it's uh, swapping some things. Um, but I can now go through and I can jump between all of my different trainers. And now if I come in here, I set the text on this one. So that way, if I click on the text, it's now going to show me Alex's profile. And I can come in here and scroll through. And again, because I've set this top bar to be uh, locked in place, my content is going to stay behind that. And I can scroll through and check out those popular classes, check out the quotes, see all the information and build this out. And so really, really, truly super quick, super easy. I can check out all of these things, have consistency throughout my application by using these core components here on the side. And I would encourage you guys that as you explore, find how loose or strict you want to be with these things. I tend to be more on the strict side because it saves me a lot of time uh, in the long run. But you know your your icons, your textiles, your colors, groupings of components are all really important to, to put together and build it out in that system. That way, it's simple and easy to use for you guys as you go throughout. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions on this. I think we've got another minute or two here before the end of the stream, and I'll try to answer those questions. Um, but definitely check out as you go, set these up. And uh, I even like to have kind of a master file that uh, sets up like all of my H1s through H5s, my paragraph styles, button styles, etc. And I kind of use that as a starting point for all projects. And then from there, I can go in and modify the, the specific design settings for that project. But it gives me a good outline of the things that I know I'm going to want and need. Um, and check out and use throughout all of my projects because you're, you're always going to have those items. Uh, and Catalina, yes, I'm on Windows. I switched like eight months ago. It's the best decision ever. I'm an Apple fanboy, but I do really now like Windows. Um, super fast. My computer is awesome. Uh, and Richard, where did I get the images? I just went through on Google, search Google searches for this. Um, for something that's a simple case study like this, uh, you know, you can grab images from, from somewhere, but uh, definitely be careful. Make sure that you're purchasing stock photography. If you're working on a real or client project, you'll want to make sure you do that. Um, I went and grabbed some images from Peloton and some other sources for this. And uh, yeah, really, really helpful there. Um, so if you guys have any more questions, definitely let us know in Discord. Remember to show and share your work early and often. We'll be in there to review those projects. Stick around for the next episode, which is going to be a full in-depth episode on design systems. And uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much.